What's up, what's up, everybody? As you can see, it's a Monday, and on Mondays, you know the moms meet up in the metaverse. Usually, we are here in our spatial moms in the metaverse meetup where we got our spa chairs, jacuzzi, and everything that moms love, like our lovely succulents, and of course, wine and fruit. But today, we are having the amazing Mama Zay actually give a lesson about chicken. So we're gonna be traveling over to the Raw 7th Eden, where we will be diving into an area that she would continue to be building. I'm really excited about it. When she was talking about some of the ideas she has for the space, this is just the first of one of the um, workshops that she will be having where she also yeah. has an entire um, show or series that would be premiering and many more workshops where we'll be talking about goats and continuing to add to her farm over here so as i mentioned we are going to be working on chickens today though so here we are with the fam what's up marquise i see you hopped in here so we're in here with marquise china and the lovely zay so zay i'll let you go ahead and take it away um from here Okay, thank you guys for having me here. Um, my name is Zay, obviously, um, and welcome to the poultry class. I'm so excited to be here and to teach everyone how to raise their own poultry. Thank you to Raw Mama Mo and Tiny for letting me use this platform to educate others in this space after creating the content so I didn't have to worry about that. Um, so let me tell you a little about myself and how I got into poultry in the first place. So I recently moved from up north to down south last year, but in 2020, me and my family were blessed to get a little taste of self-sustainability when my husband's former lawn care clients let us get the chance to live on a 100 plus acre land. No kidding, seriously. Um, given the say so immediately, I bought goats and rabbits and chickens because I really wanted to be uh, self-sustainable. I wanted to learn how to work land, being that we had all this land. I just wanted the, you know, the animals to add to that and to learn how to be self-sufficient. Um, I absolutely love animals. I'm an animal person. Therefore, I fell in love with tending to the farm animals um, daily. It was such an amazing experience that I learned through trial and tribulation that I wasn't fit to raise rabbits, um, as they all died in various ways. So that wasn't good for me. Um, goats and chickens, though, made me feel like I was the best at animal husbandry. Um, before relocating to the south, I successfully owned 33 chickens and nine goats, and even made a milk stand with my husband, which was used to milk uh, my favorite dough at the time, Buttercup. Sadly, it cost too much for us to relocate with all of my animals, so I had to sell them but I started off again with my chickens this year. Still grieving over not having goats. Um, this year my husband pur purchased 10 cinnamon queens, which are hybrid chickens. Um, they are hybrid chickens from Rhode Island Reds and Rhode Island Whites. So you can never, these are not natural chickens. They're um, created to lay eggs and to produce meat. Uh, we actually got to raise them from pullets, which pullets are actually baby chickens but they're only girls so anytime you go to like tractor supply or a local farm and you're looking for chickens you never want to get a straight run and by straight run means that they'll just give you girls and boys and sometimes when they give you straight runs you end up with more roosters than hens and roosters are dominant so they always fight and they will fight to the death which is not good so you don't want that you want pullets which are all hens FYI, if you want to go to Jack Sky. Um, unfortunately, a few weeks ago, which I had confided to Mo, I, I was in a devastating position. Um, I also had puppies that I was selling at the time to go to homes, and one of my puppies got sick. And in the midst of trying to take care of him, I had left my girls out to free range, but the heat was too much, so. My chickens that my husband <laughs> gave me, they all passed away from heat strokes, which was terrible. Um, so, yeah. not all the time we have, yeah, not all the time will you have fun raising animals, because there's always that factor of, you know, the tiniest simple mistakes, and then boom, they're gone. I gotta start all over again, but in a positive, optimistic outlook, 
I can start all over again, and this time because I did raise them from babies to being, you know, hens and laying eggs, I know what to do now and what not to do, which is don't be unattentive um, and ask for help because that's what I didn't do. So next time, it'll be better, promise, and we will see more chickens laying eggs. Um, where was I? I still have two hens and one rooster, so I'm still excited about that. And the hens that I have right now, they are two weeks from laying eggs. So I'm blessed. That was a blessing in disguise that I actually um, was gifted these chickens before my hens passed away. So thank God, because now I get to still um, show you guys how my girls are laying and actually what to give them and how to feed them and all that to lay perfect eggs. Um, so now that I've given you a little background on me and raising livestock and poultry, let's get to learning how to raise them on your own. First things first, what even is poultry? So when you hear poultry, the first thing everyone thinks of is chickens or they think of birds because that's what they are. They're domesticated birds such as chickens, turkeys, ducks, and geese. Today we will be focusing on chickens though, in particular because that's what I have. Chickens are one of the easiest animals to keep in a small amount of space, and that is absolutely true. Like, they are so easy because they are self-sufficient themselves. Um, they really don't need, like, feed. They really live off grass, so if you have an area of land that's just full of grass, trust me, if you put chickens there, they will mow your lawn like nobody's business. Um, Young female chickens are called pullets, as we said before, and adults are called hens. Young males are called cockerels, and the adults are rooster. Um, sexed chickens are chickens that are separated from pullets and cockerels. So, sexed chickens are basically, you know which one you're getting. You know if you're getting a female or a male. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can ask because I'm about to dive deep in and I'm a I'm a real good talker so if anybody has any questions right now um, ask that any questions or any input now I'm just I'm just learning I, I'm, I'm trying to buy some chickens real soon too so I'm just everything you say is making sense you can keep going if nobody else has questions okay all right well lovely um the first thing anyone thinks of when you ask why you should raise chickens is simple, eggs. People love the idea of raising poultry to have an abundance of eggs at their disposal. The, the thought of never having to buy eggs from the grocery store really gets self-sustainable slash sufficient folks really going. For homesteaders slash farmers, these beautiful birds add nutrition for compost piles by providing the best natural fertilizer, which is their food and eggshells can be used in their compost or your garden. If you need a natural lawnmower, chickens are for you. A lot of people assume that goats would get the job done, that they are grazers and prefer to eat weeds and grass when they want to. So if you want a animal to mow your lawn, chickens are your go-to. They also provide the service of getting rid of pests around your garden and outside of your home. Um, I had terrible, um, where I'm at, there's fire ants around here, and fire ants are no joke. They bite you and it feels like your feet are on fire. Um, but thanks to my chickens, they aren't that bad, but they aren't really bad in my garden. I have my coop next to my garden, and they really, like, keep the pest control down. So if you need something for pest control, too, they are your go-to. Um, while those facts should have you sold on purchasing these feather friends, I'll go deeper into why you should purchase them as of yesterday. Chicken prices according to the NPR.org have increased 16.4% and predicted to go up 15 to 18% this year. That's wholesale poultry price, aka your store bought chicken will be increased 16% up to 15 to 18%. Um, Side note, I wrote everything down, so forgive me, guys. This is how I wrote everything down. Side note, when you think of chickens also, you think of meat. Um, who wouldn't want to raise and butcher their chickens that they fed and raised? 
You know exactly what your chickens ate, how much water they were given, and their living conditions. So you are always in control of your own animal. And that's the best way to know that your animal is healthy, not pumped with stero uh, steroids or anything else, probiotics, and that they're naturally given that fat so that you can eat healthy and organically. Um, so the price of chicken, like store-bought chicken, and actually chicken themselves, has been the highest it's been in 15 years, according to the Washington Post. The price from buying pullets or straight runs from tractor supply have gone up $2. Um, five months ago, when my husband bought me 10 pullets for $20, they have gone up to $40. So now to buy 10 baby chickens, they're $40. Imagine that. When we were recently trying to see if there are particular favorite cinnamon queens, they were $45 because they're hybrids. It will only continue to go up in times where we are living in right now are uncertain and with inflation, just like the price of chicken themselves, the feed is going up as well. Which is not bad if you know how to make your own feed, but I'm a beginner. I don't know how to make my own feed yet. So that's something I'm gonna have to do. Right now though, feed is crazy, insane, highly priced. So if you're really interested in this, and this is not a scare tactic, it's just all facts. I mean, you can see it yourself in the grocery stores or at tractor supply. The time to do anything to live self-sufficient, absolutely now. Um, Side so note, like I said, this is an educational piece, and I'm not trying to scare anyone for anybody listening. I don't want you to go run into tractor supply buying 50 tickets because I said the price went up $2. Please don't do that. Um, also, before you even think of doing that, please have shelter because you cannot house chickens in your house. I have known way too many personal people who have housed chickens in their house, and that is beyond disgusting. Because let me tell you, we have it before, and it was beyond disgusting. There is no absolute way you can get chicken dust out of your house. Like, none. You can clean it and clean it and clean it. It's going to come back because they throw up dust to keep themselves cool, to keep parasites low. So when they kick up a lot of dust, it's oh, also oh, oh, too, it's just very nasty. Um, and you don't want to live like that because inhaling that is toxic. So I guess and have a, a plan, shelter, a coop before you even go and buy these animals and do your research. Um, okay. Does anybody have any questions? Before I keep, I'm going to keep on asking that because I'm going to keep on talking. <laughs> so, does anybody have any questions so far about chickens or anything? I just had a question about the shelter because I know you said like you don't want to keep them inside your house. So, would you like what kind of shelter yeah. would you use instead? Like a, I would, I would assume like a chicken coop. But like, is that you know you can get a chicken coop from somewhere and then put it in your backyard, or what does that look like? Yeah, that would be the best bet, honestly, because, like I said, in your house, it would be terrible, especially, like, just just for instance, the majority of us here are parents, even if you're not a parent, that's toxic to keep on inhaling all their nasty, like, chicken dust, and they will do that gradually every day to make sure that they are warm. It's just, a, it's basically to protect their feathers, because they can, they're birds, they, they can have parasites and all that, so... It's to protect them, instinctively to protect them. So when they kick it up, it, it stays up in the air as dust. And it just doesn't leave. And it, like I said, it can get really nasty. Um, having a coop in your backyard is perfectly fine. Because then it's, it's out in the open. You don't ever really have to worry about anything. But also, um, I would say, though, even if you had a small backyard, you could have a chicken coop with a size of 10 chickens because they are, like I said, they are small, so they would fit in a small coop like that. And they don't need that much space. They just need a lot of grass, to be honest. So if you're thinking about um, getting them and you don't have, like, per se, if you have an apartment, you don't have a house, or if you don't have land, but you have a backyard, still perfect. The only thing I would recommend is looking up all your laws because sometimes we want to sit there and be self-sustainable, but the law is like, okay, um, no chickens here or no roosters here because of sound or just because other things too. So yeah, I would definitely have them outside and I would definitely 
a, a thousand percent never tell somebody to put chickens in their house because I just had babies and it was 33 babies and it was a lot to deal with and just won't do it again. Um, so yeah, that, did I answer your question? I'll just find all randomly. Sorry. Yeah, no, that, that that definitely answered my question. Um, Crypto X was over here asking, um, why chickens and not turkeys? And I mentioned, you know, because you wanted eggs, and he asked if turkeys lay eggs or if they don't. Mm, see, I think, no, I do think they do lay eggs. I'm pretty sure they do, but I can look it up. I don't want to, I don't want to. I wasn't part, part of a turkey group. That's crazy. I wasn't part of a turkey group, and I should have paid more attention because I wanted a turkey so bad. Um, but that's cool, crypto eggs. I, I didn't do turkeys because, honestly, turkeys are a, a level above chickens. Chickens are really more easy to take care of. Turkeys are, um, they're bigger. And when they don't, when they, when they get in the mood of becoming teenagers, they start showing aggression. And I, I mean, like, chasing you attacking you aggression so i didn't want that to start off with because i do have little kids and i do want them to be hands-on with like our our birds so that's why i didn't start off with it i do want turkeys like i do want at least two turkeys but i feel like that's for something like a little bit not even later along the lines that's going to be something soon but something i'm going to dive into i have to do more research about that because i did but they are bigger and the girls, um, the hens, turkeys, they're more common than the males. But you need always a, tur a male turkey because if you don't, then the woman assumes the role of the male and she becomes aggressive too. Which also can happen with chickens as well. A girl will, if there's no rooster in the coop, a female will literally double in size and she will gain like, like um, the gobble, I call it the gobble gobble. I don't know. <laughs> it, the, the little red hanging thing, th that'll be more apparent. Like, she'll look like a boy. I had a hen that was just like that. We had no rooster before Big Red came. And she assumed alpha, and she's very aggressive. She wouldn't let me, like, give them water sometimes. So I had to, like, get her an order, which is, like, kind of, like, spur with the hose because she was, like, really trying to use her talons on me. So I'm kind of nervous for ticket, I mean turkeys, because if you ever saw turkeys, their talons are way sharper and longer. So they can absolutely do terrible damage to your legs, your arms, and everything. So that's why right now, Crypto X, I'm going to just like, like chill, on the, chill on the turkeys until I'm absolutely ready. But that's why I haven't done it yet, but I definitely do want to get into that. That's definitely an um, interest of mine to do next after getting my chickens back. Wow, that's so interesting to talk about the aggression. I definitely, uh, if you've seen uh, how I hooked up the uh, animals in here, I'm like, you can only have one rooster. I learned that from Zay last time we oh, talked yes. about chickens because uh, you talked about that aggression. But I didn't know if you don't have a rooster, then, you know, the chickens will actually become more aggressive in that situation. So that was yeah. really interesting to learn. Yeah, and also it's good that you said that uh, just one rooster to a flock. So... You have to have one rooster to every 10 chickens, uh, to every 10 hens. And you can have more if they're separated. So uh, what's gonna happen in the future is my, my husband's making it, it's called a chicken tractor. And what he's doing is he actually making their home mobile so we can move them around so they can just free range on, but without actually free ranging because we do have black vultures that will kill them and take them away. So. We're doing a chicken tractor that's in the works right now. Um, but that's also because we do want um, meat birds as well, which meat birds are chickens that are just solely made to grow fast for the meat, which are like corners cross and all that stuff, which I'll get into like next. But we're doing the chicken tractor so they can move around and um, also so we can have another rooster that's with them. Because like you said, it's only one rooster to 10 chickens. So we don't want them to become aggressive because as we, we know, I don't know if anybody knew, but they, people make chicken, I mean, roosters fight and it's brutal because they will fight to the death to protect their girls. So I want two roosters because like I said, these black vultures or whatever type of predator you have there is going to try to take your chickens. Um, I've had neighbors around me that uh, stray dogs have been taking their chickens and taking their roosters. So 
I'm taking into account I need probably more backup than just a rooster. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's what we're doing so far to make sure like everything is good because too much crowded is, is bound for disasters, bound for diseases, parasites, and we want healthy, healthy birds, we want healthy eggs, we want to, you know, not have to sit there and pump them with anything. I Like, actually, I've never really given my chickens anything but the shot that they need um, for, I don't even know how to say that word, is cope, cope? Uh, it starts with a C, guys. I'm gonna look it up and find it. But it's a disease that kills. For I, I wrote it before. I think I, whoever read my um, my what was it? Medium before about uh, chickens. There's a disease that can wipe them out. It's almost like parvo for dogs, but it's like chicken. It's for chickens. That's what they got in their feed, and then that's it. They didn't get anything else because I want them as natural, as normal as possible because. Yes, I don't want to put whatever they got in their bodies into mine. So, kind of be very mindful of that too. And if anybody's getting into chickens, just try to be mindful where you're putting into your um, birds. Watch what you give them, watch what you feed them. You can always, if you have a garden, um, I usually take whatever's dying in the garden. Like for example, I had a cucumber that like literally survived almost the whole way to summer and then just stopped growing. And it was a cute, big, big cucumber plant. I just gave that to my girls, and they just ate. So you can always give your plants anything that's in your um, your house. Like if you have, you know, you're not going to eat that last green pepper. You know for sure it's gonna. You want to toss it in the trash. You just go out to give it to the chickens, and then look, whatever whatever they eat, they're gonna poop out, and they're gonna have good, nutritious compost, everything. So yeah, just that's something to very much think about. I know a lot of people like over-the-counter medications for the birds, but please try to minimize that because you put that into your body as well. So, um, any, anything else? Any more questions? Or do you guys want to keep, let me keep on rambling? <laughs> Going and rambling about my chickens. Everybody's good? Okay. Um, okay, so, where am I at? All right, let's dig into the different breeds of chickens, which I love talking about different breeds of chickens because there are so many. My favorite, and everybody can tell you, my favorite are cinnamon queens. Like I said, the Rhode Island Red and Rhode Island White mixed together is cinnamon queens, and they are so good. They are good for laying eggs, and they're also good for me. Now, I didn't feed my girls a lot so they were not ever going to be meat chickens. They were always going to be laying birds. But if you consistently feed um, cinnamon queens like every day, very heavy, they will get big real fast. And you can use them for meat. Um, I love them because they're good for the winter and they're good for the summer. They're hardy, but like we just learned from my disastrous mistake, please keep shelter over them. Don't think that they can handle the heat and they won't have heat strokes. Yes, they will. Let's have some shelter before we just leave them out. So they are really good with some type of shading. They're good in the winter and they're good in the summer. Um, and they are actually the earliest layers. Now, my girls, they were supposed to lay in the middle of August, but they ended up laying in July, by like July 20-something. So they hit earlier than when they were supposed to. And that's just because of me properly taking care of them. Um, their eggs were very, 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 I ate their eggs, and their eggs are very, it's different than store-bought eggs, very different. It tastes different, and actually to me, I could be biased as heck when I say that they taste better, but they do to me. Um, the eggshells weren't as hard as when you buy them in the store. When you buy them, you know you crack the eggs in the store, to, like that kind of, you gotta crack it at least once or twice. Those were like simple to crack. And it's because I always give them a uh, feed that has calcium in it. That's one thing you also want to do. You also want to give uh, your birds the right amount of calcium. Too much calcium can give them vent problems. And their vent is basically like uh, where they poop out the eggs. So they can have problems if there's too much calcium because they can too much large of an egg or double yolk egg and they can really mess them up. They can actually die trying to lay an egg. So 
watch for the calcium and then make sure they're not calcium deficient because you do not want to eat an egg that's from a calcium deficient chicken. You're just eating nothing healthy. It's not healthy for you at all. It's it's not, not even the shells is good for you. It, it's crazy, but yeah, if they're calcium deficient, then it's just useless to eat their eggs because it's not healthy. And that too much calcium causes problems with them producing eggs. Um, so salmon queens are the birds that they lay 250 eggs a year. So my girls, when they first started laying eggs before the whole tragedy happened, the one week they laid nine eggs in one week. And that was really coming from two of the hens. Not all of them started producing yet. So I went hypothetically say if they all started producing at the same time, I would have had too many eggs. And thank God I saved up a lot of egg cartons, but I would have had too many eggs. Um, they lay every day and they were laying consistent. Sunlight affects your eggs and your chickens. Sunlight, they need vitamin D. It's very important. They're not. Don't keep them in shade because like I said, then you have cracked eggs, broken eggs, nasty eggs. The sun is the best thing for us and for chickens, obviously. So that's something you want to think about too. Um, yes, have shading for them, but they can be in a, if you do have a chicken coop, put it somewhere where the sun will directly shine in there because they'll bathe in the sun. They sunbathe. They, um, they stay up if they see light as well. So if you have a coop and you have maybe solar lights at the nighttime, that's terrible because <laughs> your chickens think it's still sunny outside and they'll go near the light because they're trying to absorb it to sit there and lay. Um, there's also other layering um, birds as well. There's buff orpingtons. There are um, australorps. There are we have the white chicken. It's a white industrial chicken, which is the Cornish. It's basically a meat bird, but the cousin of it can lay eggs. Um, a Cornish cross is basically the meat bird. Those are the birds that get uh, a big, the fastest at a young age. So when you're when you're working with meat birds and you want to um, butcher your birds, if you're into that, you have. Uh, such amount of times or such amount of weeks that you can feed these birds heavily. They have to be a certain age to get butchered because if they're over, then they're too, then there's too much fat that basically it's just not a, not even good to butcher it because there's so more fat than there's meat. Um, if you butch them too soon, then you don't have um, the meat that you expect. So everything with these birds are meticulous, but they're easy in a sense to raise. Because I'm like, don't do this, don't do that. But <laughs> they really are easy to raise as long as you just paying attention where you do. Um, I don't have Cornish crosses yet, but I plan to have those as meat birds. Um, there's also the Rhode Island Reds, just by themselves right now. I, I have Rhode Island Reds, and Big Red, my rooster, is a Rhode Island Red as well. Um, they lay uh, at 20 weeks, 20, 20 to 22 weeks they lay, and they aren't as... Uh, good as the cinnamon queens, they're, you know, the hybrid version because they go broody. And broody means when a hen wants to lay on an egg and she just wants to sit there because she's trying to hatch the egg. So if you hear anybody say my hen's going broody, that means she's trying to be a mom. She's just trying to make sure that, you know, she's not just popping out these eggs and then walking off and you can get to go get them. She's laying her eggs, protecting her eggs because these are her babies. So, Rhode Island Reds, they are more broody than Santa Queens, so I feel like personally I would have a challenge going to get these eggs because they would end up sitting on them. And um, if you don't watch for, for these <laughs> very smart birds, they hide their eggs because they know somebody can get, get them or a predator can. So they will hide them in various spots so you can't get them, <laughs> and they will incubate them until you find little baby chickens. I have not had that done to me, but I have been a part of a chicken group that plenty of people have found baby chicks out of nowhere <laughs> around their property because their birds just went broody and went missing because they went broody to just, you know, hatch some babies. So that's the difference between like hybrid birds and regular industrial birds. Um, what else? 
Um, I have a rooster, which is big red. He is my pain in the butt and also a blessing. Um, so he keeps the girls in check. I didn't have a rooster before. Like I said, uh, my other hen, she assumed the role of a rooster. So when I did get big red, and this is like a few days before, you know, everything happened, he did put her in check. He, he like basically like, you're not, you're not alpha, I'm alpha. Like just, just relax, <laughs> go about your day. You're, you're really a girl. So he put them in um, check and there's also a pecking order. I don't know if you guys know what a pecking order is, but if you don't know what it is, it's basically the chickens will bully each other to figure out who's the top of the list. So they will always have a weak link and you will also have the strongest one. And in the pecking order, the highest one never gets picked on, they never get pecked on, you know what, everybody leaves them alone. Um, and the one that's the weakest link, everybody bullies or will try to hurt. So when I got Big Red and the two uh, Rhode Island Reds, when I had my cinnamon queens, my, my cinnamon queens picked on the hens. They didn't pick on Big Red because he was too big to pick on, but they did pick on the hens that were little bit littler than them and new to the group. Which leads me into, um, if you do have chickens and you're trying to introduce your chickens to other chickens, Please, please, please understand that you cannot, every time a chicken is beating up another chicken, you cannot step in. It's natural for them to do that. Um, as long as nobody's, you know, being hurt, there's no chicken blood, there's no bloodbath, and they're all fine. Pecking order is very normal. Um, disturbing it confuses the birds. Um, and also, I feel like disturbing a pecking order throws out uh, what their instinct to find out who the alpha is. You have to have an alpha bird, you have to have an alpha somebody somewhere. So that's that's the pecking order. Um, also with reintrodu uh, like introducing your birds to other birds, separate them. You never know uh, what type of diseases these other birds have, um, what what they've been fed, what they have, like anything that they carry. So just separate them until you see that they're fine, they're not sick because they can give um, they have terrible diseases. There's right now the bird flu. Um, I think it's called the bird flu, is it? Or I'm probably wrong. There is a, a flu in chickens right now that is very much messing up the poultry industry right now. Um, and that's why, that's a part of the reason why uh, the price of chickens and everything has gone up. And uh, in April, there was like an outbreak, a big old outbreak, especially where I live, and it was terrible. A lot of chickens were dead, and that wasn't good. So if you're introducing chickens, or even if you first get chickens, just make sure they're good, they're sick, they're not sick. Um, going back to pullets, which are the babies, the um, little baby hens, when they, when you are caring for them, when you are making sure they go from little to big, make sure you clean their butts. It sounds crazy, and it really does, but you should make sure you clean their butts. When they're little, they poop, and their poop is so sticky, it sticks to their butthole. <laughs> and I know that's TMI, but it sticks to their butthole. And if they cannot, like, if it's stuck and it's encrusted around there, they have no way to, like, keep on pooping, which means the poop gets back up, and you just have a constipated dead baby chicken. So that's something to look out for, too. Um, I When I had my 33 chickens, four chickens died from that. So, and that's because I wasn't attentive enough because I had too many. And then, like I said in my medium before, the disease broke out and killed so many chickens. So that's still another thing to look out for. But when I'm working with little babies, if you go to track the supply, get the little babies and you don't get the big ones. Um, very much make sure they're very, very, very uh, cleaned thoroughly every day. And I'm not saying clean their whole body, just clean their butts because that's basically what you need to um, worry about. Um, what else? Um, meat birds. So we have, excuse me guys, gotta pull up more meat birds. Um, and meat birds we have Plymouth Rocks, uh, New Hampshire's, and we have also, we as in America, not just me, I don't have all these birds. I don't have them, I just had Summer Queens of Rhode Island birds. Um, there are uh, Ancona leghorns, and leghorns are more known than Anconas. Anconas are like, nobody really gets those. These are different type of reeds from like various um, 
places around the United States and also around the world because a lot of um, birds were introduced from overseas to here to mass produce. Um, there's meat classes as well. So I say meat birds, but there's broilers and fryers. Broilers and fryers are um, they're young chickens and they weigh four to four and a half pounds when they're alive and they're less than 13 weeks old when you have to kill them, well, uh, butcher them. That sounds so terrible. Can we delete that off this? We have to butcher them. Butcher sounds better. Um, and then roasters, they uh, they weigh six to eight pounds. And also, the, those are the chickens that you, like, you know, you go see the rotisserie chicken, the whole chicken, um, roasters are basically, those are the type of chickens that you just roast whole and everybody eats them. Um, and those are basically like the Cornish and the Leghorns. They're great for that because they get really, really, really big very fast. Um, also, well, I'm so sorry, guys. I have so many notes, and I wrote everything I could think about chicken down here. Um, we already talked about egg production and dual purpose breeds. Oh, no, we didn't. We did not talk about dual purpose breeds. Okay, so like I said, my cinnamon queens, they're dual purpose. Because they you can lay for uh they can lay eggs and they can also give me at the same time. Uh, um, there's all but so many different type of uh, chickens that are dual purpose, and like the New Hampshire, the Plymouth Rock, and the Rhode Island Reds. The Rhode Island Reds to me purpose they're not to me in my biased opinion. So if anybody's hearing this and they're like, "Oh girl, you're wrong." In my biased opinion, Rhode Island Reds are really for laying and not for meat. I can't see them being meat birds because as much as I feed my two little hens, they don't grow as fast as my cinnamon queens do. And I mean that in the most humblest way to them because I love them, but they don't grow as fast as them at all. Um, they don't double in size. They haven't yet. Um, and I've had them for about three weeks now. So something should have gave and it's, they're small, so maybe it's just me. But I'm biased on the Rhode Island Red being a uh, dual purpose I really think that they're just layers and I also think that they're good layers but in a way that you're not going to get eggs for eating but also eggs for babies so those are the type of chicken that you would absolutely love if you're going to not go into the root of just having eggs at the house but if you're going to be actually making income I would that that would be a good um a good chicken to have because then you know for sure that they're going to be good mothers and good they're really sturdy and they're really good mothers um and they they will make sure that their babies are born which is good if you want to make that type of income um also if you wanted to make an income off of hatching eggs that's a thing too which is you know when the, when the woman goes broody instead of you letting her sit on the eggs you put them under the heat and then you just watch them hatch and then you sell them. That's another way for income as well. Um, now, they have replacement pellets. Uh, the whole, every year a chicken has the less they lay eggs. So for the first year, you'll have so many eggs. But by the second year, it'll it'll stop being as, they'll just stop being as many eggs as the first year because usually, in my case, for cinnamon queens, they don't live past three. They die before three because they lay eggs so early. So their reproductive system is just like shot after that. Um, for other birds, personally, I don't know, but for cinnamon queens, definitely. Three years old, they don't live past, they, they don't live past that and their egg production um, drops tremendously when they're two going to three or they get complications in that way as well. Um, also, for anybody that you're thinking about, like when your when your chicken is at the age of being older, can you butcher them? Can you, you absolutely? I mean, you can. That meat will be tough though, because the older the the hen gets, the, the more muscle they get. The more you don't want to eat that. That's just going to be like pains and muscle. It's it's disgusting. You wouldn't want to eat that. That's why usually it, it sounds terrible, but you want to eat young. You want to make them grow really young, really fast, so that you can butcher them then, because that's where the meat comes from. The more they get older, the less useless they are. Um, I've never really heard anybody butchering a two-year-old chicken before, but 
I mean, I don't know. Some you can't knock it if you try, right? So I don't know who does, but I wouldn't do it. Uh, from a from a farmer friend of mine, they don't do it. That's even with Cornish crosses, they don't do that. Um, and then that's when you have replacement pullets. So once your hens are old enough, and you know they are, you know they perish from having a lifelong of laying eggs. You can replace them with new pullets, but uh, you never want to put young baby chickens with adult chickens ever because of the pecking order. If a chicken doesn't know that these babies are theirs, they will peck them to death, and that's terrible. So please don't ever do that as well. Um, and please never sit there and put uh, young chickens at all with oh, uh, an adult rooster because he will try to put them in, the, in their place too, and because he's too big, he might as well just like hurt them too. It's, it's just bound for disaster. So you always want chickens around the same age because they'll establish a good pecking order instead of unfair, which is a, a teen, a teen quote unquote, uh, chicken being with an adult chicken because they're always going to be bigger, stronger, and they will peck them to death. Um, let me see. There we go. There we go. Um, now, collecting and storing eggs, that's, that's the next thing. So when my girls have their eggs, um, washed eggs go bad quicker than unwashed eggs. And it sounds nasty and sounds crazy, but when my girls lay eggs, I left everything on there. I mean, dirt, poop, everything. And a lot of people are like, that's gross. What's gross is the fact that we think it's gross. This is normal. Um, before we had any refrigeration, before all of this technology, before advancement in the world, that's how people were eating chickens. Um, unwashed eggs can be left out for like three weeks, I think. And then if you do put them in the refrigerator, they're good for three months, but you cannot keep them outside. So if you have an unwashed egg and you go and put them in the refrigerator and then you go to make some eggs, but you forget, and it's two hours later, those eggs are terrible. Do not eat them. You will get salmonella or some type of craziness. Please do not do that. Um, always be aware of what you're doing with those. Also, wash your hands because, yes, that's nasty too. You don't want to just go into the coop chicken coop, grab eggs from a fresh, it just came out the vent, which is very disturbing if you watch it. Um, you don't want to just start doing everything else. You want to wash your hands and then, you know, handle the eggs with care. Um, washed eggs, though, they uh, have less shelf life than unwashed. So there's something to think about. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but like I said, I had my girl's eggs and they were amazing. Um, like, honestly, they really were. Um, and Cinnamon Queens, they have brown eggs. So very much it doesn't, I mean, brown eggs and white eggs really don't matter. It's just the different type of birds that lay eggs. Just like uh, Easter eggers. I don't know if you guys know what Easter eggers are. The Easter eggers, they have blue eggs, green eggs. They have colorful eggs. That's why they're called Easter eggers, and they're beautiful. They come in different sizes, shapes, and colors. Um, I had them when they were uh, babies and up north before. I never got to see one laying egg before, but hopefully I get a chance to. <laughs> Um, yeah, I feel like I hit a lot of points when trying to see, double check if I missed anything because I feel like I really, really, except for, I feel like I didn't really go into, um, what to do if you do find parasites in your chicken. And that is right now, which, uh, which is good right now, you can get over-the-counter medication for your chickens. In 2023, though, we understand that that's not going to be an option. Um, so, X put me on to that before. Um, over-the-counter medication for livestock will not be available in 2023. And I just want to repeat that. So then everybody goes and gets that now. In 2023, in June, livestock medication that's over-the-counter will not be available. You will have to go to a vet for every medication. So that's always something to think about too. Like when I say let's you should adopt chickens like yesterday. If you, you need to get chickens and all that, everything that you want to do is like yesterday because times are gonna only get harder. 
and next year they're throwing in, you know, they're throwing us a curveball with that because that means we have to go to somebody else instead of um, holistic approaches. I mean, you can do holistic approaches for um, chickens. Like, I like Demetrius Earth for everything. Or um, if they have fleas or anything on their body, it goes for chickens, it goes for dogs, it goes for goats. They have fleas or anything that's, you know, parasites. If you put Demetrius Earth, it's very fine powder very very fine you do never want to inhale it at, at all um it's it, too much of it is deadly for you and you want um food grade demetrius earth you don't want just regular demetrius earth there's two different types you want food grade because that's also something you can feed to your animals as well which is a holistic approach but if you are not holistic and you're the type to sit there and medicate because you know you need it you need it now just be aware like i said 2023 is not going to be an option. We're going to have to go to vets for um, medication. Um, and also, in 2023 with the vets, right now, um, this is just a side note for all my people who are interested in this type of things. Side note, the vets are very much backed up now. And if you have dogs, you have cats, you have anything else, you understand that vets are backed up right now. There's so many vets that are booked out until God knows when. Um, so that's very much something to think about as well when you're thinking about raising your own. Um, looking at holistic approaches and looking at um, just finding people who can give you that type of information for if your chicken is sick or your animal's sick or your livestock, making those connections now is crucial for later. So that's something to think about as well. Um, I think I really hit it on the nail. I don't know if I have anything else. Um, with that being said, does anybody have anything they wanted to ask or they wanted to comment on? Yes, I think that was so insightful. Uh, it, and to go along with your last article as well, you just always drop a lot of information, which I, which I think is really amazing. You talked about how to monetize, how to take care of them, the different ones. And I think, you know, even when you roll out into like your series, for example, and you can really dive into, you know, smaller topics in more depth. There's like so, mm -hmm. there seems like there's always so much more that you can say about every single thing. But I did have two random questions. So Crypto X was asking, what was the original chicken and then I was wondering because I always was wondering about like eggs and how they turn into chickens or don't turn into chickens and like if that's like you know a, a matter of time like how the ones in the store don't ever turn into chickens like that's always been something that I was so curious about because I always looked at eggs as like chicken periods, which I know sounds really gross, but that's why <laughs> I like stop eating them because I'm like, no, this I get the heebie-jeebies thinking about them now. <laughs> but um, you know, so okay, just just so understanding that. Oh no, no, go ahead, go ahead. Oh no, that that was my questions. Those two questions. So which, oh, okay. which was the um, original, and then about like okay, the eggs. The first original chicken, though. I don't, I don't know. Um, can we? I, that's that's a confusing question. You mean like the first ever chicken, or like the first chicken I owned? I, the first chicken breed, like the OG chicken, like the original. Because I know you mentioned a few were oh, like high. You got me there. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's one we'll have to come back to ne next yeah. time we have next class. You know. We'll yeah. Yeah. Let next time when we talk about our promise crypto X, I got you. That was a good good question. I promise you, after we get off that, I'm going to be on Google mm -hmm. searching it. Um, <laughs> but no, um, actually, your store bought eggs is just from girls. I never had a rooster in the group. That's it. I feel like everybody gets so confused. But honestly, if there's a rooster in the group, he's, he's on that inseminates the egg. Oh. If there's no rooster in the group, there's nothing to inseminate. So. It's just a hundred percent not even a baby at all. So I know a lot of people are like, "But you're eating babies," and I'm like, "I promise you, there's no man in here. Like, <laughs> there's no man to inseminate to make babies." So, uh, like, a lot of the store-bought eggs are just like hen eggs, 
But at the same time, because I don't want to just say only, sometimes you, you can, they, they will take uh, eggs, like for example, say a big red and sing it eggs in the, in the coop right now. If I get them out before they even start to do anything, that's still just egg. It's not an inseminated egg, you don't got time to do anything. Um, but if I get it by the time, you know, it's really warm and it's there for a long time and then I go to crack an egg open, I'm killing a baby. So that's, that's the scary part. But in all actuality, more, most of the store bought eggs are literally, they don't have no roosters around. Um, commercial um, chickens usually don't have roosters at all. So um, I know we, you've probably seen um, videos or, or mainly videos of these big, big industrialized big, uh, buildings with all these chickens in there, just like, you know, eating and, and all that good stuff. Those are just girls. Not a lot of boys, um, if they are boys, usually, sadly, they do get killed because they do will inseminate the egg and you don't want that. You don't ever want to go to the store, come, um, buy an egg, go home, crack it open, it's a dead baby. <laughs> so they don't usually leave um, boys, in, like cockerels or roosters in that type of setting. They usually just butcher them off or sell them, um, but mostly butcher them off. Um, so I hope I answer you. I, cause I, I know a lot of people always say that, like, that's a baby, and that's not a baby yet. I mean, <laughs> it can't be. Not, not yet. Hopefully, it may be. you never have to go through any traumatizing experience with a baby being cracked open. But in my, uh, my knowledge, most of that is just hens. Um, when I was getting my eggs, I knew for a thousand percent before Big Red even got there that those were just a thousand percent eggs with no insemination. I do want to say though, Mo, the difference between store-bought eggs and, and um, you know, homegrown chicken eggs. Uh, the homegrown chicken eggs, they will have like a dot in them. And that dot is just uh, the calcium, like how much calcium you gave your chickens. Um, and then the store-bought ones really won't have that because they do pump the, the birds with a lot of different things to make sure you don't, because a lot of people get scared when they see the dot in the egg. They get so scared that it's a baby that they will not eat it. So they pump them with all these things that make sure the dot's not there. But my chicken eggs, every single one we cracked open had a little dot and that's just for calcium. We looked it up because we were scared too, like, wait, wait, maybe there's a chance somewhere but no, it's just calcium. So I hope that answers your question. And Crypto X, I promise you, I'm going to tell you what the first three chickens were. It did answer my question, but then it made me have another question. So how does a rooster inseminate okay. an egg? Because like that just got me too. Because I'm like, okay, I thought the roosters was over there doing like the rooster do to make like specific eggs for chickens. But the chickens lay the egg and then the rooster goes and does something to the egg to make the baby. Now, you got me there, so I'm going to cheat real quick, guys. And I'm going to go on Google real fast and find this because I never even thought to think about this until Big Red got here. And I didn't even think about it then because I didn't want to pick myself out. Because I've never <laughs> seen him do anything. Um, i never seen him do anything. Now, I've seen him put the girls in check plenty of times, but I don't know uh, how... Wait, no, let me... How do... Roosters and send eggs. And Google just really butchered that whole thing. Okay. Um, I did see while I'm I'm checking this out. I will tell you a weird story about how I seen goats, and uh, they are the funniest animals on this planet. Uh, so I had a goat named Buttercup, like I mentioned before. I used to milk her. And she had a baby in January. His name was Peanut. That was the first little baby we had on the farm. And then we had Olivia. Um, well, one day I went to go give them their food. And they got busy in front of me, but it wasn't even business. It was like, he, he did the do in two seconds. It was like, it was like, whoop, done. And I was so shocked, like, what just happened? And I had to run home and tell my husband, because I was so confused as to what happened. And don't you know, she ended up being pregnant just for that one time, that quick fix. I said, wow, that's great. Um, but it says a rooster inseminates a hen with this sperm by jumping on her back. Okay, so basically he does the do. It's not a, like he goes to the egg. He does the do. 
Uh, um, oh, wow. So, Ooh. basically, he sits on her back. Okay. And that happens. And then they I have not thing. seen that happen, and I promise you, I don't want to see that happen. <laughs> but I guess that's how they do it. Okay. So, yeah. Thank God I know that now, because I definitely don't ever want to see that. That's traumatizing, and I see that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, they, they, yeah, they, uh, get on homegirls back and they, uh, make sure she has babies. <laughs> so, so that's how they inseminate. Um, also, wait, while we're checking before we do, because I know we also, I don't want to keep pressure the time. We said an hour and I knew I was going to go above that. Um, I did want to check, just because of that said, the first original breed of root, uh, chickens. And I'm thinking, honestly, I want to say the original chickens were those, uh, uh, the white chickens, because uh, I feel like that would be it, because that's everywhere, that's like a meme, I mean, not a meme, it's an emoji, it's always a, like a, you know, like every time you see a chicken or a rooster, it's always white with red, you know, you never really see, when you get older, then you see like the brown ones, but I've always seen the white chickens with the red, um, So trying to find that. That was a very good question. He got me good. I like that. Um, the Southeast Asian Red. Wow, this is a lot. The Southeast Asian Red Jungle Fowl is the primary wild ancestor of chickens, which they look. They. I like that. Okay, so they just look like regular birds. Uh, they're brown, and they're, they don't even look different. They literally look like just regular chickens. So, I guess we got our chickens from Asia because they're the Asian, Southeast Ooh. Asian red jungle fowl. I guess that's where we got them from. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Usually, you know, for the OGs, they always come from somewhere crazy. But no, that, that definitely makes sense to answer both of those questions. So thank you so much for providing so much insight today. This was such a great conversation. Yes, and I can't wait to do it again. This is so good. I love this. Awesome. So before we end the um, recording, is there anything else you wanted to add? I know we're going to watch this quick video um afterwards for anybody you know that is listening to the podcast after our recording we always dive into an educational video in order to take it a little bit further and of course we don't record it because uh ain't nobody trying to get copyright stricken but we'll actually be talking about uh what is iot and what does that mean for farmers and it is a hyperledger project project so We'll be um, talking about that here in just a moment, especially because, like Zay was saying, a lot of things are changing for farmers, you know. And one of the things Zay and I was talking about when we first connected was how Zay can help try to save the farmers. Because, you know, a lot of farmers, I feel like, can be stuck in their ways and, you know, be a little resistant to these times. And I, I understand why, because you are attacking what they've been doing for years now. Um, but, you know, by... The only way you're going to be successful is by actually understanding what you're even going against. So having these kind of conversations is definitely important. So, um, Zay, is there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up the podcast? Um, I just want to say that this was great and just plan to see more, uh, more of me give you more educational content on livestock and poultry because... Even though I'm teaching you, I am learning as well, and it's always good to keep on learning, keep on moving, so um, I'm not a know-it-all, I don't know it all, but I will keep on giving you the best of my knowledge, all about farming, all about sustainability, self-sufficiency, on a homestead, so thank you for this uh, wonderful first time, and I can't wait for more. Thank you. And to all of our listeners, you heard that. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. I will be dropping the link to her medium in the comments so you can read the article and get even more amazing details that's really laid out about her chickens and taking care of them. And like she said, this is not the last time you'll see her. So make sure you follow her on Instagram, Twitter. Zay, you want to plug your social medias? 
Um, do you want me to put it? Um, oh no, you can just say like them. This. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yes. Okay. So my Instagram. Let me actually go to it because I get so confused. Sometimes I'm the girl with the goats, and sometimes it's the veggie box. So. Yes, I see you added a new one today too. So I'm like, let me just ask her what she wants to plug. Uh -huh. That one, and that was actually cool because that one I was just literally gonna just make for the homestead and that. And I'm like, you know what? Because I did document everything, I do want everybody to follow me. So that's why I added everybody. But um, Twitter, um, my at name is Zavenchi underscore five, and I'm the girl with the goats. And then on Instagram, I have two Instagrams, and my personal one I won't put there, but my second one is the Jenkins Homestead underscore. Please follow because I will show you everything I'm doing and updates on what's going on on the homestead. Yay. And like she said, she's going to get more chickens and we're going to be able to follow along on the journey and grow with her. So I'm very excited about uh, just seeing you grow as well in the space. So thank you again for every thing that you've shared today thank you to all of our listeners for being a part and um even for everyone that slid through here this has really been great